Get ready for the punchline. Here's your look at the new DC Collectibles, DC Essentials, figure number 11, The Joker. For a guy who calls himself a clown, the Joker certainly has more style than your typical carnival jester, at least in this figure. This 7-inch tall version of Batman's deadliest foe is more dapper than other iterations of his character, but his menace and capacity for chaos remain. With over 20 points of articulation, this Joker figure can impose madness wherever you put him. Okay, kitties, the first thing we're going to do is figure out how tall Mr. J stands to the same height as most, if not all, the Essentials figures. There we go. There we go. You're looking at a figure that stands 7.0 or 7 inches even. Yelling out to the back is the mob asking, well, what about centimeters? Somebody had actually said, you mentioned centimeters way too much. Well, if you live in Canada, you probably mention centimeters all the time. That's the unit of measurement we do here. You're looking at a figure that stands 17.9 cm's. That's centimeters. The first thing we're going to have a look at is Joker's soul accessory, Lone Tear. That's the only thing he comes with. But what he does come with, though, is a really neat representation, a little replica of his famous Joker cane. You can see that the molding of the head sculpt there is a classic looking Joker. Reminiscent, of course, of the figure that we're about to look at here. Love also that the handle has been painted in green to simulate his quaff. It's been done here again in a glorious looking metallic gold cascading from the gold. Oh, boy, you have a way with words. Merci beaucoup. Cascading down from the handle portion of the cane, uh, you are treated to traditional Joker colors as well, the purple, and then again going with the green hair there, and tipped off there in the metallic gold once again. It does fit in either one of his hands, so if you feel like, well, I would like to be able to put it in, in both of his hands, you can. There's nothing really stopping you, other than for the fact that the cane does sit loose. Some sad news to report. One way to work around that is as long as you keep this little ringlet of the gold kind of kept in his grip, the cane sits a little looser, or sits a little more stable than loose. You put it anywhere else but there, and there just isn't a thick enough section to the cane for the Clown Prince of Crime to actually be able to hold on to it. That is actually the case also with the other hand. On the other hand, uh, again, you can see it just sits loose until you get to that one little ringlet of gold. And even then, this hand sits, holds it a little loose as well. But again, you can hold it in either one of his hands. Sadly, that is the only accessory he comes with. Teasing, certainly, to the fact that he does have two gripping hands. You would hope, at the very least, that he could have come with another accessory, like a pair of playing cards or a laughing fish or something along those lines. One thing I want to pleasantly report as well is that Joker actually has peg holes on the undersides of his feet. DC is listening. Thank goodness for that. So if you want to put Joker in any bit of a dynamic pose, oh, you know I'm going to be doing that. Uh, if you have providing the proper display stand, which I think is just a standard, this is a standard port. It's not too big. It's not too small. It's just right. It's baby bear size. Uh, you know, you're perfectly fine. You're good to go. Uh, even though he doesn't come with a display stand, again, you could probably just use any display stand uh, within reason, of course. NECA stands would fit this perfectly fine as well. But uh, yeah, sadly, that's the only that's the only accessories he comes with. Let's have a look at this figure. Now, I honestly will be frank with you, even though your name isn't, well, my name isn't Frank. It certainly is not Frank. I'll be frank with you. I honestly didn't like this face sculpt initially. Having some time to kind of sit down by myself, I kept myself isolated from the world for a good handful of days, just me and this one figure. I have to say that the head sculpt has grown on me. It sort of has a vintage look. Of all the Joker head sculpts that they could have easily gone with, they went with something that I think is acceptable as a Joker head sculpt, but also doing something a little bit differently as well. Shading certainly plays a big key element role here. Um, you can see that there's a fair bit of this purple, almost purplish gray color that they've shaded around the eye area and around the area around his, uh, around his furrowed brow, right above his eyebrows, actually. 
Looking at this head sculpt, I also was thinking to myself, this looks like some something, some some suggestions. And a couple of ideas that I came across was, part of me thinks this looks a little bit like the Death in the Family Joker from uh, the Batman comic 429. Probably throw an image up right here. Uh, it does look very much like that head sculpt. There it is right there. The other thing it kind of also reminds me of, and this is to really a bit of a stretch, it reminds me of something I would see animated in the show Eon Flux. While, while we're at it, why don't we just throw an image up right there? There we go. That's just some character from Eon Flux. Just something that gets a close enough idea of what hopefully I'm talking about. There's something a little bit exaggerated, off-proportioned about Joker's face here that I actually think works well for the figure. Normally, like I said, if I had just simply taken this out of the packaging, yanked him from his plastic prison, my initial reaction, my initial feelings towards discussing this figure with you, my viewing audience, the mob, if you will, is that I would have said I don't really like the head sculpt. There's something a little bit too exaggerated to Joker's head sculpt. Even at its best, you know, moderation is the key. Anything could be great. You can enjoy cake, but if you eat cake all the time, it's a little too much. Maybe this is a little too much Joker. And yet now, as I've spent some time in isolation away from family and friends, I can tell you now, I'm actually really liking this head sculpt. The only thing I would have changed differently to this head is I probably would have maybe added a little bit more white in the forehead. I think the shading envelops a little bit of the forehead area too much. The other thing I also would have done too is I would have accentuated, maybe brought out some of the separation on his mouth. Unfortunately, it just looks like something got missed. And I think that might be the one deal breaker for this particular figure is you can see that the teeth are sculpted, but they sort of just blend together. It looks like baleen on a whale. That's such a thing. If they had just gone in and just put a line divide, I certainly wouldn't want every single tooth outlined in black because that would just be way too much. But at the very least, if they put like a dividing line in between, I would let the sculpt do the rest. Or they could have used a darker shade to this and just use that as the outline just so it wasn't so much. Speaking of so much, also you can see that there's a little bit of a gum line showing right above Joker's teeth. It's a slight detractor, I have to admit, because it kind of looks like he's got a little bit on his of something that he's eaten on his teeth. So I probably would have maybe taken that out. Those are the only things I would actually change to this figure. A little less shading, like I said, and a little bit more defined mouth line or teeth line so that it just didn't look like baleen. As for the, the rest of the figure, the head sculpt, it's quite good. It's sort of a classic, like I said, Joker, repeating my opinions from earlier. Sort of something I would have seen from like the 90s Joker. And of all the various different things that they could have gone with Joker-wise, I think I'm happy that they settled on this. It's got just the right amount of Joker, just the sort of the right amount of the Clown Prince of Crime that I think really makes this guy really good. A uh, head sculpt, of course, certainly could have been a deal breaker. They could have played it safe, but I don't feel like this is a safe head sculpt, if that makes any sense. As for the rest of his body, very much a tried and true Joker coloring. Uh, you got the almost aqua, sort of aquamarine blue for his shirt, purple tie, a orange vest purple pants and then he's got himself a long tailed jacket did not like for the fact that the jacket was a different darker purple than the rest of his pants but i think that's also grown on me as well see that's really this the key to successfully looking and reviewing these figures you really got to spend some time just to kind of look at them isolate yourself from the rest of the world if need be but it really does give you a good amount of time just to kind of assess whether you truly really like a figure. Because initially, you may get this out of packaging and think, oh no, 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 that's not working. That's not working one bit. And yet now I find myself just thinking, I really love this figure. There's, again, a little few things I would have done differently to it. Maybe putting some pinstripes there in his legs just to kind of break up the purple from the rest of his jacket. Maybe that could have gone some long way as well. Looking at his shoes, really nicely sculpted in there as well. A two-tone, two-tone of purple and a black undersole of his shoes, complete with, oh, I love you, DC Collectibles, the peg holes in the undersides of his feet. Long overdue, if you personally ask me. 
even got the little flower on the top here which uh, doesn't seem like it's separate from the rest of his jacket this is a again a soft plastic ideally again there's really nothing i would change other than tweaking tweaking pinstripes on the pants dividing the teeth just a little bit from themselves but overall pretty happy with this figure i have to admit Look at this guy's posability. Let's do that right now. His head rotates all the way around. A hinge up and down. You can see sort of where the hinge is happening there in the top of the neck. See, it's right there. It's right there. You don't see it? Oh, it's right. Yeah, it's right there. Right there. The shoulders hinge outward. Uh, you can rotate the arms all the way around. Bend at the elbow. Actually, to be exact, a double hinge on the elbow jack. Swivel at the bicep. Swivel at the hands. Hinges back and forth also on the hands. Uh, he has an upper torso crunch, which just on this figure is really still stiff. I'm still fine with that. Swivel on the waist, legs hinge outward, a forward and back, top swivel cut in the thigh, double hinge happening on the knee, and a hinge on the foot, also an ankle rocker. Of course, the plaguing problem that would have been affecting all the DC Essentials figures would be figures having a tough time standing. Certainly, I don't know if it's just the case that they seem to be using obviously different types of feet for Joker. I don't have any problems with the guy standing, of course, as well. Making use of finally incorporating peg holes on the unders of his feet certainly also make this guy capable of doing dynamic poses and not simply standing straight like all the other DC Essentials figures have. The hardest thing about liking any comic book character is finding a figure that really does it true justice. Or in the case of a villain, not so much justice, but you know what I mean. Joker was always a character that I always really loved, but gosh darn it, it was always a tough time finding a true good-looking Joker. And while there has been many Jokers over the years that have fit the title of a good Joker, there's also been some poor ones as well. For the longest time, my favorite Joker figure has been the DC Universe Joker, which unfortunately has gotten loose over the years. Up to that point, there really wasn't anything that could potentially dethrone that clown prince of crime until we have the DC Essentials Joker. Yes, the more I look at this particular figure in the head sculpt and the choices that they made with it, I must admit this could potentially be my new favorite Joker in my collection. It also certainly helps as well that I finally have peg holes on the undersides of my DC Essentials figures, at least with Joker here, that I can do something a little bit more creative and dynamic than simply just having the figure standing straight. Time will certainly tell as to whether this figure will develop the loose ankle problems that a lot of the DC Essentials figures have, but in the meantime, I can enjoy the Joker for what he is, and that is a fantastic release potentially one of the best under the DC Essentials lineup and definitely would highly recommend it if you guys are interested in picking up Joker figures this might be like I said one of the best it's just a shame that in final looks I couldn't display him with anything else but his cane that's the only one other thing I would say wish this guy could have come with better accessories either way though we take what we can get and certainly taking what we can get here is a really great looking head sculpt and overall just a well executed Joker figure like I said could potentially be one of my favorites right now in my collection. Some good news, my friends. If you are interested in picking this one up for yourself, the Joker from the DC Essentials line is now available in comic book stores. So get out there. Run out immediately as you can. I'm sure there will be multiples available there, so you don't have to run over and push kids over to get to him. Please don't do that anyway, so you don't want to be a jerk. But you should be able to find this guy readily available now at your local comic book stores. Today, once again, we are having a look at the DC Essentials, a really awesome looking Joker. I believe this was figure 11, and it was also in the same wave as Harley Quinn, Nightwing, and Batgirl, just FYI. If you guys haven't had a chance to yet to hit that little subscribe button down below, what are you waiting for? Certainly more videos, more DC Essentials figure reviews will be coming soon, so stay tuned for those. Also, if you want to go back, by the way, FYI, if you want to go back and look at some of my previous DC Essentials, because I pretty much have done all of them up to the latest wave, uh, there's playlists. There's a playlist specifically for DC Essentials. So feel free, get a gander at those, check them out, and come back. Talk about what you saw. Tell others what you saw as well. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you guys next time.